smile for the camera. Ride the Coca Cola. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Bicycle Touring Talk 62. I'm George Schlackeck. The one, the one and only. only. And I'm telling you all about my Destination Canada 150 bicycle tour. Last time I was camping in Hope, BC. Remember? I was looking forward to riding the Kettle Valley Railway Trail from here on. Actually, I was really excited about it. I left the campground relatively early after having a couple of sandwiches for breakfast. For my morning cup of coffee, I stopped at the Flying J truck stop, which was on my way. The weather still seemed a bit unstable after the storm from the previous day, but promising enough for a good day's ride. My second stop was in town at the visitor center where I arrived before it opened. A bunch of international tourists were already lined up. I was the only one traveling by bicycle and attracted some curiosity. My aim was to find out whether or not I was going to be able to ride the KVR from here on all the way to Princeton and beyond. Barbara was eventually going to meet up with me in Penticton and join the ride for some of the best parts of this trail. I was quite confident that there were large sections of the KVR that were suitable for our touring bikes. However, the part beginning in Hope was questionable. At the visitor center I was given a free map and some vague information. I was going to have to ride on the Coquihalla for at least several kilometers, but there was supposed to be trail access along the way. When I asked about the condition of the trail in the area, I got a vague comment by the young lady who was eager to help other tourists. <laughs> Did she roll her eyes? I really wasn't impressed and there were more questions on my mind now than before entering this place. The first trail section that included the Othello tunnels was accessible right in town and supposedly in great shape. It also happened to be the main attraction for most of the other tourists that morning. Finding the trail, even in the town of Hope, wasn't a slam dunk. Okay, there are signs here everywhere for Trans Canada Trail. Well, uh, there are actually so many signs that they're faded. But, you know, I actually don't know which way to go because it seems like they go all over the place. Uh, I was at the visitor center and they gave me uh, a map and stuff, but the way she scribbled on there, well, I'm just, I, I think I figured it out, but it's not the way the sign is pointing. But it was worth it as it led me through some beautiful forest and some old railway tunnels. I just went through that tunnel. It, it was kind of interesting. Slow going for sure, but uh, it's so different. Unfortunately, this section wasn't very long, perhaps five kilometers. It eventually ended at a parking lot from where it was impossible to find the continuation. There were absolutely no signs except for one that indicated a bike route. It looks like the fun is over just for now. I gotta go on the Coquihalla. That's the highway that's above me here. That led me straight onto the Coquihalla Highway, the famous four-lane expressway. 
I had really hoped to avoid riding this way, but once on it there was no way to exit other than a couple of rough dead-end trails. Definitely not the KBR. The, the immediate challenge on the highway was a climb that seemed to get steeper and steeper before eventually reaching the summit. Riding on the shoulder felt modestly safe in sections, but that was almost non-existent in others. The steepest parts slowed me down to a mere crawl, like six kilometers an hour. A loaded bike is extremely unstable on the road at that speed. Those steep climbs also happened to be on the sections that had no shoulder at all because there were now three car lanes taking up the exact same width. I felt very unsafe. Every time a big truck passed me, I was praying for an alert driver who would have enough courtesy to leave me plenty of space. Some surely did, but there were others who seemed to enjoy scaring the living hell out of me by not budging, even an inch. Were they out to teach me a lesson, or was it just ignorance? I had made sure I was very visible, wearing this annoying reflective vest that blocked my view every time I tried to look down at my freewheel to confirm what gear I was in. Whew. I'm, I'm glad I cleared this cement barrier that you see behind me because, you know, uh, that... Well, there's three lanes here going that way, but uh, they took away the shoulder, so potentially that puts me within inches of the passing trucks and you know there's uh, only like six inches to the barrier so i could get squished there in no time anyways that part is done for sure i thought i must have been the only one to ever ride a bicycle up this highway it seemed like a crazy idea that could end my life in a split second because of some yahoo losing control of his vehicle accidents do happen and people sometimes get silly on long straight highways surely this wasn't a place for cyclists it was more like a perfect example of a reason not to cycle across canada where was the darn kvr the only evidence of the kettle valley rail line were some old signs indicating where stations had once been. So this, uh, what I reached here, was Aurum Station. It used to be part of the uh, Kettle Valley Railway. There isn't really much of a trail to ride on except this. Yep, yep, I'm still riding on the highway. It's not that much fun, but it's all there is. Why hadn't I listened to Cindy and Brian, the couple I had met on the Duke Point Ferry? They had advised me to use Highway 3 and not to bother with the KBR. Smile for the camera. Ride the Coca Cola. Every long and grueling climb with a loaded touring bike eventually gets rewarded. But things got a lot worse for a while before I reached the summit. There was a very long incline that ended with an impassable avalanche shed that much resembled a tunnel. Yeah, that's what's ahead. A steep climb for the next six kilometers or so. Then there's a brake check area, which means after that it goes down. There were exactly three lanes through this tunnel. No shoulder at all. For a brief moment I was considering using the strategy I had developed on Vancouver Island, which involved timing the cars and making a run for it when it was likely to stay clear for a while. You think I'm going into this? No! But this was different. 
The avalanche shed was way too long and the incline was steady. The road had a slight curve, but traffic was going faster here than on the Pacific Rim Highway. I would have been in grave danger of getting run over for way too long. Thankfully, there was an alternative. I was going to push it right by here. At least they didn't put the barrier in front of my face. On the right side of this avalanche shelter was an embankment that was wide enough for me to push the bike on it. It consisted of gravel, but with some deep washed out sections making it anything but smooth. It was the only choice I had. No. Reaching the summit eventually felt like quite an accomplishment, but it wasn't really that much fun. The area was filthy with roadside debris and too much gravel, probably residue from the winter. The only perks were the fantastic view of snow peaked mountains and of course the descent that was about to begin. My speed was going to multiply by about 10 with virtually zero effort. Descending from the Coquihalla summit was one of the most amazing experiences ever to be had on the touring bike. Not only was it steep enough to propel me to insane speeds, it was also long enough to keep me there for quite some time, almost making me forget the climb that had taken up the major part of my day, leaving me wishing for a miracle. From the peak of the Coquihalla, I basically flew right into the Britton Creek rest area where I had no intention of staying for any longer than it would take to consume a snack and some ice cream that was apparently available here. Can you imagine my surprise when I met Tao, a cyclist from Japan who had just completed the same ordeal as me? Perhaps I wasn't completely crazy, or at least... I wasn't the only one. There was a sitting room within the rest area building and Tao had set up shop in there. So just when you think you're the only one who's crazy enough to go in the Kokohala. <laughs> this was as far as he was going to go today. The rest area attendant had given him permission to sleep in the building. It was comfortable enough with wooden benches and of course a bathroom and solid shelter from the elements. We had a lot to chat about and Tao showed me pictures of his prior bicycle tours as well as his family and his home in Japan. He apparently had a beautiful family who would surely miss him while he was on his mission to conquer Canada by bicycle. His final destination? Halifax, he told me. Crazy? It depends on your perspective. But isn't it far crazier to visit Canada from far away at high expense only to spend time in a few major centers and some overcrowded tourist attractions? I ended up staying at the rest area too for the night. The availability of free accommodation with relative luxury compared to stealth camping somewhere in the bush was too good to pass off. Besides, it gave me a chance to hang out with Tao a bit longer, who was planning to take a very different route from my own. His ride was a fairly high-end touring bike with skinny 700c tires that would almost certainly not be suitable for the trail I was still hoping to find. I would have to make a serious effort to get off the highway the next day. 
The last thing I wanted was to end up in Merritt, further down the Coquihalla, because that would put me far away from Penticton, where Barbara and I were planning to meet up. Remember, last episode I told you about riding on the KVR. The only place I had done this so far was in the town of Hope, but definitely not for lack of trying. Once you're on the Coquihalla, it is not easy to find the KVR. Someone told me that they hacked it into pieces when they first built the highway. Now I understood why the lady at the visitor center in Hope had rolled her eyes. She probably gets asked about the KVR a lot and doesn't have a good answer. Unfortunately, Canada is not consistently good with maintaining recreational trails. Is cycling across Canada a good idea? In the next episode, I will give you some reasons why you should not ride your bicycle across our country. But don't worry, there will be some positive things too. And ultimately, you get to call your own shots. I hope you'll join me for that video right here in about a week. Did I ever mention that I'd like you to like this video and subscribe to my channel? Well, could you? You may also want to check out the videos on the screen right now. Hasta la vista, amigo.